Hey guys, and welcome to the early access of Unreal Engine 5. It's a very exciting time for us all. If you haven't seen it already, it looks absolutely amazing, and I'd recommend going to watch their video, which I'll leave a link to in the description down below, which just goes over a lot of the main features, but really showing it all off, because obviously they have the great systems to do that. And I'm going to be going over some of it today. So I'll give a brief overview of what's new, my first thoughts, and some more in-depth explanation on some new things as well. So first off, what's new with Unreal Engine 5? Well, they've added new UI, Nanite, Lumen, open worlds with world partition and data layers, new animations with a full body IK and control rig and motion warping, meta sounds or an audio overhaul, temporal super resolution, sky atmosphere system, quixel bridge, mega assemblies, and a game feature plugin system. So as you can see, lots of great new things really built to just really optimize how you're gonna make the game to help you achieve the best you can do. And I'm gonna be explaining more about the first six that I just mentioned in that list. Also make sure to check the description for some useful links. For example, Unreal Engine's own overview video where they explain a bit more and show off a lot more of the details there. And it's a Vimeo link as well, which means it's gonna be a whole lot higher resolution than it would be on YouTube to really show what this new engine is capable of doing. So first off, I'm going to go over how to actually install Unreal Engine 5, as you may not know how to. So again, this is just the early access, but what you want to do first is you want to open up the Epic Games Launcher. And once you've opened it up, you should see a UE5 tab up here. So if you don't have that, well first off, make sure you go to Unreal Engine on the list in the top left up here. And if you still don't see it, then you can click on the little arrow in the bottom right of your screen, then right click on the Epic Games logo and hit exit, and then open it up again and that should force an update of the Epic Games Launcher which should then give you this UE5 tab which you can press here and then simply press download early access to be able to use this engine. And they've also released the sample project which they have made to really utilize the engine to its full capabilities which is also the project they went over in the video. However it is 100 gigabytes and you do need quite a good PC to run it. So unfortunately I can't run it myself so I won't be going over it too much in this video but I will be using some of the video that they've made. So again in the description down below I'll write down the minimum and recommended requirements to run this project but for Unreal Engine 5 itself you should be able to do it if you can run Unreal Engine 4. It's a very similar thing at the moment just to get the full capabilities of the engine you'll need a much better PC which again quite high end but that's just with going to the full capability of what the engine can do. Also one thing I should mention is the early access is for testing it out only and for experimenting and checking out new content. It's not really shipped ready and it's not recommended to start developing games on it just yet. You obviously can do, but it's really not recommended. However, when the time comes to it, you can use your older engine version projects with UE5 straight away. You don't need to remake anything. So you can start making a project right now in UE4 or if you already are making a project in UE4, you can continue developing on it and then just update the engine and upgrade this project to UE5 automatically very easily at the simple press of a button. You don't need to worry about that at all. Obviously, I'd probably recommend making a backup save project anyway before upgrading it just in case something does go wrong, but nothing really should go wrong. It should be a very simple process, very similar to upgrading from 4.25 to 4.26, for example. So first off, I'm going to go over the new UI. So in UE5, the Unreal Editor gets a makeover with an updated visual style, streamlined workflows, and an optimized use of screen real estate, making it easier, faster, and more pleasing to use. So essentially, we get a much cleaner looking UI. It's way easier to get a proper idea of how the game will look when played, and we can see much more of the viewport at once. And so you can see that right here as well. A big difference right now is the viewport is much bigger. So we don't have the content browser down here, we don't have another screen on the left making the viewport tiny. We now have it in a nice big screen like this. So when we hit play as well, we get much more of the screen space for how the game is going to look. And you may be wondering, how do we get to the content browser if we don't have access to it? Well, a nice little shortcut is control space and we'll just pop up here like so. And if you press control space again, it disappears. So then we can just pop up any menu that we want only when we need to use it so we can then just again simply have a nice clean workspace to work with and only use stuff when we actually need it. And so like I just mentioned there, to free up more space for viewport interactions, they've added the ability to easily summon and stow the content browser and to dock any editor tab to the collapsible sidebar. 
so you can now quickly access frequently used properties in the details panel with a new favoriting system, while the create new button on the main toolbar lets you easily place actors in your world. Again, it's just adding to the ease of use, quality of life, and a clean sharpness to UE5. So again, you can press this create button up here to then get anything you want, which was this big chunky menu we had here before. It's now just a simple drop down menu up here instead, which is a lot better. And again, now also up here, we have this select editing mode, landscape, foliage, painting, all of this good stuff, which again would normally have been a big menu over here. I'll also go over how the blueprints look. So good news for everyone, it doesn't look that much different. So I'm gonna hit control space, go to third person BP, blueprints and third person character. And as you can see again, this is a new UI here as well. It all looks different and much nicer. I'm gonna open up the third person character and as you can see, the blueprints look the exact same. So it's not like you're gonna to need to learn a whole new language from Unreal Engine 5. It's pretty much the exact same as Unreal Engine 4, which makes it really easy to just adapt over and move everything over if you wanted to. It just all looks a little bit cleaner and also the hotkeys are the same as well so if i were to hold down b and left click that would still get a branch here like so you can see it looks slightly different but not too much it's the exact same thing i'm going to delete that compile and save up here which again has changed ever so slightly just again to make this a little bit smaller so we have more room and space here go to the viewport and you can see this is what this looks like the components list is slightly different the same the details panel it's just got more of a dark mode theme to it just to make everything again look nicer for making games so i mentioned that quite a bit it just makes everything look nicer because that's really that's what they've done with the new ui and next up i'm going to be going over the new nanite system so nanite is a virtualized micro polygon geometry system which allows you to go into massive amounts of geometric detail on your models with millions of tries on each one so you can have photorealistic film quality assets with millions of polygons per asset in your scene with millions of assets in your scene. So let's say you have 1 million rocks with 1 million polygons each, that's 1 trillion polygons in your scene and UE5 can handle that just fine. Obviously as long as your PC can handle it as well, but Unreal Engine 5 will not be a chokehold for that. So especially if you're an artist or a modeler, you'll understand just how crazy that is. You can have all this detail while maintaining a stable frame rate. And it works by removing all of the painstaking methods we had to do ourselves before. So you may be familiar with LODs, streaming distances, etc, etc, i.e. unloading and loading detail. Well, Nanite does this for us. In Epic's words, Nanite intelligently streams and processes only the detail you can perceive, largely removing poly count and draw call constraints, and eliminating time-consuming work like baking details to normal maps and manually authoring LODs, freeing you up to concentrate on creativity. So again, anything that we had to do before to really optimize the game to make it run smoother with all the amount of detail, it's gonna do that for us. So we don't need to worry about that. We can just focus on making the game look great and Unreal will focus on making it work as well. Next up, I'm gonna go on to Lumen. Now Lumen is great for all of you out there obsessed with lighting. It's a fully dynamic global illumination solution that lets you create dynamic, believable scenes where indirect lighting adapts on the fly to change direct lighting or geometry. For example, changing the sun's angle with the time of day, turning on a flashlight, or opening an exterior door. Again, those are Epic's words, and what this means is that we now have a much more efficient system for updating lighting at runtime and keeping it look realistic. Essentially, Unreal Engine 5 gives us amazing film quality capabilities. So anytime the lighting changes in the world, this will also affect how the world will look around you. So with UE4, you may have noticed that the lighting doesn't really change a massive amount when you actually update any lighting information while playing a game, or the lighting in the editor looks drastically different to in-game, especially after packaging. Well, Lumen means you no longer have to author lightmap UVs, wait for lightmaps to bake, or place reflection captures. Lighting in-game is incredibly important, especially for realism, and Lumen is again making our job way easier by doing a lot of that hard work for us. So again, you can just focus on making the game look great and Unreal will focus on making it work. Same thing I said with Nanite, but it's the same thing. Essentially, I feel like Epic right now are just focusing on giving developers and artists and modelers more freedom to just be creative, creating the games without having to focus too much on optimization and fixing little bugs here and there on why stuff isn't working with the amount of detail people want to go into. So they can go into mass amounts of detail without worrying that the engine doesn't have the capabilities to work with what they can create. 
now Unreal can fast pass what we can do. So now we've got open worlds. So with more and more games being open world nowadays, Unreal really wanted to help us developers create games like these. So with a new world partition system, levels are now managed and streamed different to UE4. They automatically divide the world into a grid and stream only the necessary details. This again helps massively with performance. So if you made an open world game in UE4, the chances are you will have used world composition and level streaming. The new world partition system will do this for us automatically once again. So you may notice a common theme here, Unreal are removing or upgrading all of the tedious tasks that we had to do for performance beforehand, so we can focus on creativity in the project. It also improves the way in which multiple people work on a project at once. If you ever tried this with UE4, it probably wasn't smooth sailing straight away and had hiccups here and there along the journey as well as you were developing, while team members can now also simultaneously work on the same region of the same world without treading on each other's toes, thanks to a new one file per actor system. While with data layers, you can create different variations of the same world such as daytime and nighttime versions as layers that exist in the same space. So again, oftentimes you might be editing something and somebody else would as well, so then one of you would need to revert your save to catch up with each other's new updates. Again, just an annoying little bug, not necessarily a bug, but just an annoying feature that was there because of how it was set up beforehand. One file per actor solves that. And the data layers is amazing too. If you ever wanted to create basically a duplicate of a map so you can change some things, you can now do that very easily. They use the example of day and night, so different lights, different buildings, etc. Nightlife is very different to day life. Or you could make a Christmas map and a summer map, a city and a destroyed city. The list goes on and on. It means you don't have to create multiple maps to do one thing, you can do it all in the same map or the same level and just toggle between the different data layers. They all exist together, not separately. So if you update the city, it updates for all layers, you don't have to go into each separate map or level and make those changes to them all. Again, it's just a great way to allow us to just do slightly different things on the same map. So we want the map to look one way in one section of the game, but we want the exact same map to look a different way in a different section of the game. We can do that without having to have two different maps. So hopefully the video on screen will explain that a lot better, and you've probably seen examples of this in quite a lot of games. We can now do that with Unreal Engine. Now let's move on to animations. So Unreal Engine 5 also includes its own in-engine control rig and animation creation systems. And this is absolutely amazing, because this means you no longer have to keep switching between softwares or searching for animations elsewhere, you can now create and edit animations inside of Unreal itself. And again, I've been asked this quite a lot in the past of how can I edit this animation, how can I do this, that and the other, and I've always had to say, oh, you have to go into Blender to do this, or you have to find the animation somewhere else, you can't really do it on Unreal, it's not made for that. Well now it is. The control rig tool allows you to quickly create rigs and share them across multiple characters, pose them in sequencer, and save and apply the poses with a new pose browser, and easily create natural movement with a new full body IK solver. And with motion warping, you can dynamically adjust a character's root motion to align to different targets with a single animation. The full body IK is amazing as well, as a massive improvement on the already great IK work in UE4. For those who aren't aware, a quick summary of IK is it is inverse kinematics. Essentially, it will move bones to be in a realistic position in the world. So feet will adapt to a rocky, uneven surface they are walking on, or an arm will move when brushing against a wall for example, and I'd recommend checking out their vaulting example on motion warping as well, as it dynamically adjusts the anim montage to fit perfectly on any object, and it's absolutely amazing, it looks great. A very efficient, dynamic system, so you don't have to create loads of different animations for different specific objects, one animation montage will adapt to work for different objects throughout the entire game. And again, there's a link to this full video in the description down below. Definitely go and watch it if you haven't already. And last up, I'm going to explain the Meta Sounds. Now, Meta Sounds is a high performance system that offers complete control over audio DSP graph generation of sound sources, letting you manage all the aspects of audio rendering to drive next generation procedural audio experiences. Metasounds allows dynamically changing audio at runtime, so it can be based on different in-game parameters, such as the player's health maybe. So as their health decreases or increases, the audio can also change as well. So let's say the hearing gets worse, or they start hearing slightly different things, because maybe you could also use sanity, so some things might be heightened when they have high sanity, and lessened when they have lower sanity. In UE5, there's been a complete audio overhaul to really bring up the quality to match everything else, 
And again, their video really goes over how great it can sound. Because again, they used it in kind of a boss battle in their project, which again, I'd love to show you properly. However, like I said at the start of the video, my PC isn't really capable of doing that. But again, I think that will probably be it for today's video. Just kind of gone over my first thoughts of Unreal Engine 5 Early Access and some of the different new things that they've added into the engine, which is all absolutely amazing. Very excited for the future of the engine. I think it's looking great so far. And again, this is just the first early access look at it. They've said themselves that there is so much more to come in the future when they do release it properly. And they're gonna be updating it continually as well, like they have done with UE4, 3, 2, and 1 all the time. Epic is an amazing company and they really care about us, the developers, their player base, everything. They put the people first before money and anything else, which I really love about them. So let me know what you thought about Unreal Engine 5 in the comments down below. And also to answer some questions, I am going to still be continuing with UE4 tutorials as well. Like I say, this is just the early access at the moment. And when it does come out fully, what I'll probably do is still do some UE4 and do some UE5, maybe do half and half. Because I know a lot of people probably don't want to upgrade to UE5. I've heard that quite a bit in my Discord server. So again, I'll be making the best of both worlds so everybody can still do what they want. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and sorry if there wasn't too much in this. Again, kind of limited with my PC. I can't show you the base project or a lot of the other stuff that they have added in at the moment. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.